Gary, here's the all important first question. Does anybody in Orlando call you the problem? Uh, nah, not down here. Not down here. No one does. Maybe they will as your NBA career continues. Let's turn the clock back to August. You started every playoff game for the Magic last year in the bubble. What did it mean to you to be a playoff starter in your second NBA season? Uh, it was huge, you know, for a young guy to come, you know, come through what I had to go through to get, you know, to that point of being, you know, on a, a roster and just, you know, having quality minutes. Uh, just goes through just, just pure grind that, you know, I was able to put through injuries and just the work. Uh, it was it was huge for me and my confidence and just, you know, I just think a huge piece to my journey as far as, you know, through my battles throughout Cincinnati, throughout, you know, getting into the league, Houston, and then now. That led to a two-year contract extension with Orlando in November, and now you're playing an important role on the team, averaging more than 20 minutes per game. What do you think you bring to the Orlando Magic right now? Uh, I think, you know, early on I struggled shooting the ball, but, you know, in the bubble, I shot it really well. Last year I shot it really good. And then, you know, just that I'm just that spacer that allows, you know, our guys like uh, Vooch and, you know, Evan and T. Ross to, you know, get more opportunities where teams can help less on those get off me because it gives them, you know, more space to play. So I, and then on defense, just my, you know, my ability just to, you know, not back down and just, you know, give – guys a hard time to score you know a lot of guys in our league these days are you know uh, small forwards and power forwards that are you know pretty gifted so you know I think I you know it's perfect time for me to be in the NBA and just you know be able to bring some of the tools that I uh, have in my game to bring value to an NBA team and uh, luckily I was able to do that in the bubble and now you know I do it here in my role in uh, Orlando. Gary, you started your NBA career almost on an all-star team with the Houston Rockets, and it seemed like Chris Paul really took you under his wing. What did you learn from him and some of the other great vets on that team? Uh, I think it's just the, the approach to being a professional. You know, guys kind of get, you know, young guys, you know, typically get lost when they come in the league. You know, with the, you know, coming from college, you know, there's a lot of, you know, strict and, you know, protocols are constantly someone has you following and checking up on you and making sure you're getting your stuff in and being a good, you know, athlete uh, and a student. So I think, you know, coming to the league, uh, you know, being on that team with all those vets, it was huge to just see how they approached their job every day and just uh, the way they thought the game and where they addressed the game every day was really huge for me to learn and uh, just see the professionalism. You know, I think Chris is the ultimate uh, professional when it comes to uh, his approach to the game and just him as a person, as a father, as a husband, you know, it's just huge for a young guy like myself to step in the league to, you know, kind of watch him and shadow him every day. Let's turn the clock back to your awesome University of Cincinnati career. Player of the year in the conference, two-time defensive player of the year in the conference. Started more games than any other player in Bearcat history. You were part of 106 wins in your UC career. Do any of those accomplishments or anything else you did in, you, in your uh, UC career really stand out as the thing you're most proud of? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it's just something that I'll – always be able to look back on and, you know, kind of uh, give myself a pat on the back because it wasn't easy. You know, I think uh, I talked to some of the guys, you know, uh, and just some of the things we had to go through as far as, you know, just the injuries, uh, the practices, and just the, the grit because, you know, our, our uh, identity as a, a Bearcat was just tough. You know, hard nose and just, you know, even if we didn't have the offense, you know, all the, you know, the most talented guys, we were going to find a way to make the game hard for you guys, for another team to beat us. You know, we, we, didn't, we didn't have a Sweet 16 or Elite 8 kind of team, but, you know, we just played hard. It gave the fans, it gave the community something to, like, you know, really pride themselves on that because at any, any given night, even if you're way talented to us, we could outwork you and uh, come out victorious. And I think, you know, just that identity I got from being there for four years, you know, uh, 
it was it was it wasn't easy. It was it was pretty it was pretty uh, brutal, and I and it, it was a ugly it was a pretty brutal. So it was just one of those things that you can't you can't take anything away from that. And I just think you know it, was, it it builds character. It builds you know a lot as far as you know the who I am today and how I am how I'm able to survive in this league that uh that now I'm, I'm in now. Coach Conan definitely pushed you and your te teammates hard. How did that prepare you for NBA life? Uh, just uh, reaching for, he always reached for per perfection and, you know, knew how to push your buttons and just, you know, gave you the truth, you know, even if it wasn't delivered the prettiest way. Um, and always just trying to, you know, figure out who he, w who he had under his wings as far as who he can count on and rely on and who was going to fold under pressure. And, how hard to push certain guys. I know from the beginning, as a freshman, you know, I just, he really was, you know, he was on me pretty hard. Uh, my freshman year, I was ready to transfer because uh, we had those, uh, we went to the Bahamas and uh, we had some like, we had 10 days of real practice and then we, you know, that was pretty rough as hard as he was. And then when, train, when training camp started, it got pretty ugly and I just was like, I don't know how I want to do this for four years. and. Uh, but over time, you just kind of it becomes it becomes easier because you figure it out. You get tougher, your mind gets stronger, and you're able to you know push through certain barriers that uh, just are really tough. And I think you know it, it, it makes you ready for uh, life outside of basketball as well as basketball. We're definitely grateful that uh, you elected to to stick it out and wound up having four great years at UC. Here's my final question. We saw pictures in the bubble of your fishing prowess. Are you among the best fishermen in the NBA? I would almost, I could, without even knowing how many guys actually fish, I would say I would probably put my money on that I'll be top five. Out of 450 guys, I could be top five fishermen in the league. I know Paul George fishes well, TJ Lee from, from uh, I forgot what team he's on, but he fishes well a lot. And, uh, yeah, I, I would say I'm probably top five. I wouldn't say I'm the best yet because I, I, I don't know my competitors and, you know, I don't know what kind of fishing, you know, that there will be. But I like my chances being number one at largemouth fishing. If we're largemouth fishing, I'm probably the best. But if we're, like, deep sea fishing and all that other stuff, like, you can count me out. I like your chances as well. And uh, I hope you get the opportunity to get on the water during the NBA All-Star break. Great catching up, Gary. Congratulations on your successes in the NBA, and best of luck going forward. Oh, thank you, Dan. It was good talking to you. I appreciate you guys having me as well.